Hi again, I'm Dr. Christina Dervatis, an obstetrician gynecologist in Newmarket, Ontario. Welcome back to my channel, Talking IUC with Dr. D. Uh, today's video is a follow-up to the previous one in that I um, had mentioned that I was going to do a video talking about uh, some common myths and misconceptions about intrauterine contraception. So I'm just going to start right through um, going through a list of some of the uh, most common misconceptions that I see out there um, regarding IUC. So myth number one is the idea that IUC may have a negative impact on fertility. The fact is, is that patients who have an IUD, when that IUD is removed, they have the same chance of conceiving as any other patient. There is not any impact on future fertility. Now, some of this myth, um, I think, arose uh, based on previous IUDs that were from like 30 years ago and are not on the market and have nothing to do with the current IUDs available. Um, those IUDs and their risk of infection and how that related to uh, infertility, but I will, again, as I have in previous videos, assure you that the IUD uh, is not associated with decreased chances of fertility in the future. It's recommended as number one, uh, one of the first line options for contraception by the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, a society that is all about women and fertility and pregnancy and um, reproductive health. There, it, it just doesn't make sense that um, the SOGC would promote IUC as a first line option for women to consider if there were uh, concerns about future fertility. So to dispel myth number one, the IUD does not cause problems with fertility. Um, myth two is the idea that in order to have an IUC inserted that you have to have had kids previously. Um, I've addressed this again in previous videos, but hopefully by now uh, in this video series, it's clear to you that the IUD uh, can be used by women who have not yet had any children or pregnancies at all, as well as women who have uh, had children. So that's myth number two. The IUD uh, is not excluded from patients who have not had children and can be used by all sexually active women, regardless of their reproductive history. The third very common myth uh, that's out there is the concept that the levonorgestrel IUD can cause weight gain. And again, I've addressed this at length in my um, video about possible hormonal side effects of the levonorgestrel IUD. But just once again, to reinforce that when they've done studies of thousands of women and trials where they scientifically um, look at the different potential side effects um, in women using the levonorgestrel IUD, there has not been an association with weight gain. And many um, patients are also surprised to learn that the same is true for the birth control pill, that the actual studies and evidence has not shown an association between the birth control pill and weight gain. And the actual amount of hormone that's getting into your bloodstream with the levonorgestrel IUD is very, very low, measured in picograms per milliliter, which is like a trillionth of a gram is a picogram. So very little hormone getting to, into the bloodstream, no real mechanism for that small exposure to hormone um, for that to be causing weight gain. So just to reassure you, there's not any scientific evidence to support that the IUD, uh, the levonorgestrel IUD causes weight gain. Myth number four pertains to specific types of infections and discharge, um, specifically talking about things like bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections. Now, in several of my previous videos, I make reference to the fact that there can be a small risk of infection with the IUD, usually just within the first 20 days after insertion and related to the insertion process. And the infection that, uh, which is quite rare, less than 2%, the infection that can be associated in that first 20 days um, after the insertion process is usually something um, that we call as sort of an umbrella term, um, pelvic inflammatory disease. So very, very different from um, what's known as bacterial vaginosis, uh, which is um, a unique sort of infection in that it's not truly an infection of new bacteria, but a change in the levels and the balance of normal bacteria that we expect to see um, in the vaginal environment. Um, but 
Again, the, the infection that we're talking about with IUD use is not bacterial vaginosis, is not yeast infections. Um, there is no scientific evidence to say that the slight shift in hormones with a levonorgestrel IUD or with having a physical um, object present uh, in the uterus or vaginally, whether it be a levonorgestrel IUD or copper IUD, there's not any evidence to show a mechanism for that causing a shift in the vaginal bacteria, such as bacterial vaginosis. There's not any evidence for that causing um, yeast infections. Um, and again, I will say that the same is true for the birth control pill. I also have a lot of patients who come to me saying, oh, ever since I've been on the pill, X, Y, or Z has been happening or I've been having yeast infections. And that may be chronologically true, but um, when we look at the actual evidence, there's not any evidence to link um, bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections with either IUD use or birth control pill use. Um, so that's another myth that I just wanted to address. Uh, the next myth is the idea that, oh, well, because something is inside of me, I'm going to feel it or my partner is going to feel it during intercourse. And that also is a myth. The design of the IUD is, is such that you don't notice it's there. It is simply there doing its job. If it's in proper position and, and there's not any complications or issues, then definitely you should not on a day-to-day -day basis have a sensation that the IUD is present. Now, after the insertion, some women might have some mild cramps. Um, with the copper IUD uh, during the menstrual cycle, there might be a tendency to more uh, menstrual cramps. Um, but generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, this is not something that you're going to feel or know that's there. Uh, and that's the beauty of the IUD is that it's designed so that it's worry-free. It's just there doing its job um, without your knowledge of it and without you having to remember to do anything. Um, and furthermore, with regards to the partner being able to feel the strings or feel the IUD, that rarely is a problem. Um, occasionally, um, I might see a patient who comes back and if there's any issue, we can simply trim the strings a little bit shorter and that usually resolves the problem. But the bottom line, this is designed for you to not feel the IUD, nor will your partner notice that it's there. Those are just some myths. There's a lot out there that I come across in my practice, but these are just some of the most common uh, ones that I wanted to address. Um, so I hope this video has been helpful today. I will uh, remind you that in less than the time that it took for you to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. The uh, whole process takes about five minutes and provides five years of worry-free contraception. Um, I'll also close uh, to remind you that contraception is a choice and make sure that your choice is an informed one and choose what's right for you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.